Travel alert, returning to the marked door, you take five minutes to arrive, the room remains empty, but doors lead away to the north, east, south and west. Travel alert, using the hallway, you travel west, taking 15 minutes to arrive, this 20 by 30 room is carved from greenish stone and layered with carpets, tapestries and all manner of decorated pillows. A large, grizzled and apparently ancient hobgoblin is seated among the pillows, of all things, reading a large tome. The hobgoblin chieftain is still a fearsome opponent but does not seem to possess any fighting spirit. He explains that kobolds invaded the dungeon just recently, intent on launching a surprise attack upon the halfling village above. When asked about the missing children, the hobgoblin is willing to offer some advice for five gold pieces. You certainly can't trust the beastie, but you're hopeful he has some helpful information. GM Note your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, the hobgoblin takes your gold and explains that the dungeon was built decades ago by a religious order of the halflings above and was eventually abandoned and forgotten. Kobolds recently invaded and are growing bolder by the day, he's not surprised to hear about the kidnapped children. The hobgoblin knows that the kobold chieftain is somewhere to the east. The hobgoblin's bedchamber remains distinct and a bit out of place. Exits lead away to the north, east and south. Travel alert, using the hallway, you travel south, taking 5 minutes to arrive, as you enter this octagonal room you are struck by an odd sight. Each wall has a small niche in it, and in each of them is a glowing skull. The skulls do not appear threatening but they are unusual. Over by the west wall are 5 humanoid creatures doing their best to pry out one of the skulls. Preoccupied by their task, they have yet to notice you. The humanoids are orcs and rather fearsome. They eye you up quite suspiciously and for a long moment you prepare for combat. Their leader then speaks, still suspicious but a hint of gratitude in his eyes. You not backstab us, so we not fight you. The orc leader then orders the other four to retreat and quickly they are gone. Each hero earns 67 experience points. With the orcs gone, you turn to the glowing skull in the western wall. It's similar to all of the other glowing skulls but it's almost been pride free. Your party searches for traps but don't find any. Although the magical skull had been cemented into the wall, the orcs had almost freed it and it takes little effort to pry the object from its location and take the item. The skull itself seems unordinary apart from the light spell that has been permanently cast upon it, a sort of magical flashlight, you grab the unusual item and secure it in your backpack. The glowing skulls here continue to illuminate the chamber fairly well. Exits lead away to the north, northeast and east. You spend about 15 minutes searching the area. You discover a secret path east. You don't find anything hidden, however. Travel alert, using the secret door, you travel east, taking 15 minutes to arrive, the secret door opens to reveal a 20-foot square room. A large stone sarcophagus rests in the center of the room, decorated to imply that a brave halfling hero is interred here. A motionless halfling skeleton stands in each corner of the room gripping an ancient spear. Your party searches for traps but don't find any. As you slide the lid off the dusty sarcophagus, a magic mouth spell activates and says many baubles did I plunder from the dead. Now it is my turn to give up my baubles to the living. May they serve you as they serve me. Like clockwork, 
The skeletal hero inside the sarcophagus sits up and looks at you, a wiry grin on its face. You don't sense any evil from the undead hero but rather a chance to adventure one last time. Naturally the four skeletons in the corner also attack. Your party is under attack. Eyeing the entire party are four skeletons and one skeleton hero. It's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short bow and fires at skeleton number 3, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 18, plus 3 to hit, Ariana hits skeleton number 3, doing 1 point of damage, skeleton number 3 suffers minimal damage versus ammunition and leaving it with 4 hit points. It's Bart Hall's turn. What do you want him to do? Needing a 20 or less on percentile dice, a 96 is rolled. Failure. Barthol tries to blend into the shadows but is unsuccessful, remaining visible to all combatants. It's Eswin's turn. What do you want him to do? Eswin readies his sling and fires at skeleton number 3, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 11, plus 2 to hit, Eswin hits skeleton number 3, doing 1 point of damage, skeleton number 3 suffers minimal damage versus ammunition and leaving it with 3 hit points. Redfern readies his sling and fires at skeleton number 3, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 7, plus 1 to hit, St. Aeus uses turn undead, attempting to turn destroy all encountered undead skeleton number 1 is turned, skeleton number 2 is turned, skeleton number 3 is turned, skeleton number 4 is turned. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, Janet uses turn undead, but wasn't able to turn any of the encountered undead. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet readies her sling and fires at skeleton hero, needing a 16 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage, Janet hits skeleton hero, doing 2 points of damage, Skep Barthol readies his sling and fires at skeleton hero, needing a 16 to hit. D Ariana readies her short bow and fires at skeleton hero, needing a 16 to hit. It's C. Nyers's turn. What do you want him to do? St. Aeus readies his mace and swings at skeleton hero, needing a 16 to hit. Die roll is a 17, plus 2 to hit. Redfern readies his ornate dagger plus 1 and swings at skeleton hero, needing a 16 to hit. Die roll is a 4. GM note. A new combat round has begun. Ariana readies her longsword and swings at skeleton hero, needing a 16 to hit. St. Aeus readies his mace and swings at skeleton hero, needing a 16 to hit. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? GM note, after any remaining combat, click the take items button to grab any drop loot. Janet readies her mace plus one and swings at skeleton hero, needing a 16 to hit. Die roll is a 19, plus three to hit. Janet hits Skeleton Hero, doing 10 points of damage and defeating it. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 41 experience points. The last of the skeletons go down and the room draws silent. A moment later, you hear a strange click sound as the lid of the sarcophagus slides back into place, locking itself a moment later, and, apparently, forever. Fortunately, the real loot appears to be on the skeleton hero itself, free for the taking. 
The ancient tomb is quiet. Secret exits lead away to the north and west. S. Wynn nods and takes everything from within the immediate area. Travel alert, using the hallway, you travel northeast, taking 10 minutes to arrive. A huge wooden cage hangs suspended from the ceiling here, three small halfling children huddled together inside, you've found the kidnapped kids. However, a handful of kobolds stand beneath poking at them with various weapons and laughing while their leader sits next to a cooking fire. There they are. Redfern observes, pointing to the suspended cage. Now what? Let's try talking to the kobolds. Sainadir suggests. Taking the cleric's advice, you quickly gain the attention of the kobolds, who cease their laughing and take you seriously. The kobold chieftain steps forward, gripping his short sword but here to barter, not fight. You must be here to ransom these little brats. We weren't sure to ransom them or turn them over to the orc slavers. We want 50 gold pieces, each. The kobolds are fearsome opponents but you could defeat them. Another option is to try convincing the kobolds to surrender, by bluffing that your party is far more powerful. You can also pay their ransom of 150 gold pieces, although that won't stop them from kidnapping more halflings. You're facing a fateful decision here. What will you do? Choose an option, attack, bluff, pay ransom. Paying ransom for these children now will only encourage more kidnappings in the future. Eswin exclaims, recognizing what you need to do. The only way to end this is to put all of you down. Each hero earns 83 experience points. The Cobalt Chieftain points toward your party, makes a motion across his neck to indicate that your throats are to be slit, and then leads his Cobalts forward to attack. It's do or die for your party. Your party is under attack. Coming at all of you are 8 kobolds and 1 kobold chieftain. It's C. Nyers's turn. What do you want him to do? Sainadius readies his sling and fires at Cobalt number 5, needing a 11 to hit. Die roll is a 6, plus 1 to hit, Sainadius misses Cobalt num- Janet readies her sling and fires at Cobalt number 5, needing a 11 to hit. Die roll is a 15, plus 2 to hit, Janet hits Cobalt number 5, doing 4 points of damage and defeating it. Cobalt number 8 attacks Ariana with its sling needing a 16 to hit. Die roll is a 15, plus 1 to hit, Cobalt number 8 hits Ariana, shooting her for 2 points of damage and leaving Ariana with 5 hit points. Cobalt Chieftain closes in on Ariana to attack. It's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her longsword and swings at Cobalt Chieftain, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 1. Redfern casts magic missile on Cobalt number 7, striking it with a magic missile for 3 points of damage. Cobalt number 7 has been defeated. It's Barthal's turn. What do you want him to do? Barthal leaps forward and engages with Cobalt number 8 in hand to hand combat. Cobalt number 1 attacks Eswin with its sling, needing a 16 to hit. Die roll is a 15, plus 1 to hit. 
Cobalt number 1 hits Eswin, shooting him for 1 point of damage and leaving Eswin with 14 hit points. It's Eswin's turn. What do you want him to do? Eswin readies his short sword plus 1 and swings at Cobalt number 8, needing a 11 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage, Eswin hits Cobalt number 8, doing 12 points of damage and defeating it. Cobalt number 2 attacks Ariana with its sling needing a 16 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage, Cobalt number 2 hits Ariana, shooting her for 4 points of damage and leaving Ariana with 1 hit point. Cobalt number 3 attacks Eswin with its sling needing a 16 to hit. Cobalt number 4 attacks Janet with its sling needing a 14. Cobalt number 6 attacks Janet with its sling needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 13. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, it's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet readies her mace plus 1 and swings at Cobalt Chieftain, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 8, plus, Cobalt number 3 attacks Eswin with its sling needing a 16 to hit. Die roll is a 18, plus 1 to hit, Cobalt number 3 hits Eswin, Cobalt number 4 attacks Janet with its sling needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 13, it's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her longsword and swings at Cobalt Chieftain, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 15, plus 2 to hit, Ariana hits Cobalt Chieftain, doing 9 points of damage and defeating it. It's Red Fern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern leaps forward and engages with Cobalt number 1 in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Cobalt number 2 attacks Aria. Cobalt number 6 attacks Janet with its sling needing a 14 to hit. It's C. Nyers's turn. What do you want him to do? C. Nyers readies his mace and swings at Cobalt number 1, needing a 11 to hit. Die roll is a 17. Plus, Barthol leaps forward and engages with Cobalt number 2 in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's Eswin's turn. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled. Redfern leaps forward and engages with Cobalt number 3 in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Cobalt number 2 fails a morale check, flees the encounter area and is automatically defeated. Cobalt number 3 fails a morale check, flees the encounter area and is automatically defeated. It's Eswin's turn. What do you want him to do? Eswin actively defends himself, foregoing his turn but increasing his armor class by plus one. It's Ariana's turn. What do you want? Ariana actively defends herself, foregoing her turn but increasing her armor class by plus one. It's C. Nyers's turn. What do you want him to do? St. Nyers readies his sling and fires at Cobalt number six, needing a 11 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage. Barthol leaps forward and engages with Cobalt number four in hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's Janet's turn. Janet readies her mace plus one and swings at Cobalt number four, needing a 11 to hit. Die roll is a 17, the party's reputation score permanently increases by 1 point. GM note, after any remaining combat, click the take items button to grab any drop loot, well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 26 experience points. After a heroic fight, you defeat the kobolds and save the day. Your actions will not only help free the kidnapped children but put an end to the kobold menace up above in Cordina. Well done. You quickly lower the cage to the floor of this chamber and unlock its crude door. The children continue to cower in the far corner of the cage, not sure of what to think. Let's do a party charisma check to see how the children react to you. Needing a 14 or less from your heroes, a 10 was rolled. Success. GM note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, while tough on the kobolds, you are equally as kind and gentle to these halfling children and they immediately rush to you, 
crying tears of both joy and terror. Sensing the good in you, the children embrace you passionately, so very happy to have been rescued. Light within the small chamber still flickers from a cooking fire to the west. A doorway leads away to the north. Janet casts Cure Light Wounds on Ariana, healing her for 6 hit points. St. Aetius casts Cure Light Wounds on Janet, healing her for 7 hit points. Ariana nods and takes everything from within the immediate area. You spend about 20 minutes searching the area. You discover a secret doorway southwest. You also find one small chest. Your party searches for traps but don't find any. The chest has been locked. A thief will need to pick the lock, you can try something from your inventory, such as a skeleton key or you can even just try bashing the object open. Barthol has a 25% chance of picking the lock and rolls a 15 on percentile dice. Success. The chest is unlocked and now easily opened. Inside, you find 220 silver pieces, 297 copper pieces, 2 aventurins, 154 electrum pieces, 55 gold pieces, 19 platinum pieces and 1 potion of control human. Redfern nods and takes everything from within the immediate area. Travel alert, returning to the entrance room, you take a half hour to arrive, the entrance room remains empty. In addition to the hallways to the north and south, you can climb back up to the halfling village above through a small tunnel in the corner. Travel alert, using the tunnel, you travel up, taking 5 minutes to arrive. You return the three rescued children to their parents, a splendid sight for all. The parents weep tears of joy at seeing their offspring return to them, and they can't thank you enough for their daring rescue. Your expanded party's first real victory together, you carefully watch us win for a few moments to see if even he can enjoy the moment. Let's do a spirit check on the warrior and see what happens. The party's reputation score permanently increases by one point, watching S win for a while, he seems almost oblivious of the joy and celebration around him. What horrible incident could have happened to him to essentially block such joy you wonder? As you stand there, additional halflings enter the large storage building and join their brethren in their celebration, thanking you again and again. Each of the children personally bow before you and then are led away by grateful parents. Well done, this little side quest is complete. GM note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, the remaining halflings all thank you again, then quickly depart, their happy voices soon a memory. Let's go ahead and award your party a quest concluding experience bonus. Each hero earns 250 experience points. The halflings have left the storage building and there is little left to do here. It's time to continue on your way.
Travel alert, using the road, you travel north, taking five minutes to arrive, the tavern has been all but emptied. You should either travel south to the old storage building or northeast back to the village center. Travel alert, using the path, you travel northeast, taking 20 minutes to arrive, the road here meanders through the tiny halfling village of Corlena to the southwest. The way northwest leads to Kathleen half a day away while the road east leads toward the Wilex River and the northern edges of the Evil Root Forest nearly a day away. GM alert, disease is no longer affecting Ariana, travel alert, using the road, you travel east, taking a half a day to arrive, the largest river within Pirepa traverses from north to south here, the Wilex almost a quarter of a mile across and impossible to bridge. Instead, a series of ferries and rafts routinely carry travelers across. A large building is nestled along the river's western shoreline, a combination in restaurant and store that looks inviting. Finally, a piece of civilization, Sainayer's comments, likely not enjoying the quest so far. Let's go rest and recover. Your fellow heroes nod with approval and you lead them to the inn ahead, the thunderous Wilex River just a few hundred feet beyond. Your party stands near the western shore of the mighty Wilex River. The road leading west will take you back to Kathleen in about a day or so while the eastern shore of the Wilex can be reached via a simple raft here. Your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended, spells are memorized and your heroes are refreshed and re-energized. Your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended, spells are memorized and your heroes are refreshed and re-energized. Travel alert, using the path, you travel east, taking 10 minutes to arrive, the inn boathouse is large and well visited, set perhaps 50 feet west of the Wilex beyond, a quarter mile wide river nearly impassable due to its strong current. A path leads from the back of the inn to the river beyond, terminating near a large wooden raft you can use to cross the river. I've been here before, Redfern begins, recognizing the location. Father and I passed through here on our way to Chagaria. But where is everyone? Looking about, it does not take long to recognize that something isn't right. Typically, dozens of folks would be passing through here on their way either along the river or even across it. Yet the location seems quiet and still like a cemetery. Perhaps you can learn more by visiting the in-boat house. The road here continues east toward a large building alongside the western shore of the Wilex River. Travel alert, using the path, you travel east. Taking five minutes to arrive, the grand front door marks the entrance to the in boat house, ordinarily an impressive wooden structure that would seem clean and fancy to welcome new guests. However, something's not right, and you immediately suspect foul play. Perhaps a quick search of the area will tell you more. The doors here have been forced open from the outside despite several solid locks to keep them secure. Their wooden surfaces are also deeply clawed and pitted, You've seen this before when the undead army attacked the main gate of Kathleen. Clearly, this inn has recently been attacked as well. The double doors here are nearly destroyed and easily allow passage into the building. Travel alert, using the doorway, you travel east, taking a few moments to arrive, stepping into the grand common room of the inn, you find dozens of fancy tables, chairs, and accessories all strewn about as if a tornado had torn through the chamber. All sorts of debris lie about, 
and you can't help but be sickened by the stench of decaying flesh hidden amongst the devastation. Dear Sisla, what's happened here? Sainadius is the first to gasp. Let's look for survivors. While a thorough search of the room would take hours, you spend enough time to recognize that you stand within a tiny battlefield, blood lies soaked everywhere and you soon find the corpses of perhaps a dozen patrons. They are not the bodies of adventurers or guards but the innocent victims of a simple establishment. You then hear what sounds like a cry for help coming from outside opposite the destroyed chamber, the doorway leading to the river beyond blocked by several overturned tables. Within the carnage, it appears that someone has survived, if you can reach that person. Wading through the wrecked common room, your party quickly clears away the tables and debris blocking the doorway leading back outside, the swift flowing Wilex River itself just 100 feet away or so. The common room here is some 40 feet to a side and thoroughly ruined, as if a small army had attacked the chamber. A single doorway leads to the east toward the Wilex River. Travel alert, using the doorway, you travel east, taking a few moments to arrive, your heroes step through the eastern door of the inn and return outdoors, a wooden walkway and tiny grassy fields separating you from the Wilex River beyond. Lying on the ground in a fetal position is an older woman, shouting for help between sobs of terror and heartbreak. Taking point, Ariana quickly steps forward, asking the woman what is wrong. As you approach the woman, she belts out one final blood-curdling scream, then drops to the ground lifeless, as if her very soul had just been ripped from her. No. Ariana cries, rushing to the collapsed woman. You naturally rush to her aid as well, but she appears to have just died in front of you. Quickly examining the woman, you find what appears to be a small note pinned to her shirt. The note simply reads time to die. For a moment the note does not make any sense. The dead woman then begins to stir and slowly she stands back to her feet, the whites of her eyes replaced with an inky blackness that can only mean one thing, she's been transformed into a zombie. Your focus on the woman, you recognize too late that dozens of additional undead have circled around you. Moments later, a small army of skeletons, zombies, and even a few ghouls completely surround you, your party has been lured into a deadly trap. Your party is under attack. Facing the entire party are five skeletons, two zombies, one ghoul, and two skeleton archers. It's Eswin's turn. What do you want him to do? Eswin readies his short sword plus one and swings at Ghoul, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 19, plus five to hit, Eswin hits Ghoul, doing eight points of damage and leaving it with one hit point. Skeleton number three closes in on Ariana to attack, Skeleton number four closes in on Eswin to attack, Skeleton number five closes in on Eswin to attack. Zombie number two closes in on Janet to attack. It's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at skeleton number three, needing a 13 to hit. Janet uses turn undead, but wasn't able to turn any of the encountered undead. It's Barthal's turn. What? Barthal readies his short sword and swings at ghoul, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 19, plus two to hit, Barthal hits ghoul. Sainadius uses turn undead, but wasn't able to turn any of the encountered undead. Skeleton Art, Zombie number 1 closes in on Sainadius to attack. It's Red Fern's turn. What do you want him to do?
Redfern readies his ornate dagger plus one and swings at skeleton number four, needing a 13 to hit. Skeleton archer number one attacks Sainadius with its short bow needing a 17 to hit. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, skeleton number three attacks Ariana with its short sword needing a 18 to hit. Die roll is a 20, skeleton number two attacks Eswin with its short sword needing a 16 to hit. Die roll is a 18, plus one to hit, it's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at skeleton number three, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 13, plus th Arthal leaps forward and engages with skeleton archer number two in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Skeleton number, skeleton number five attacks Eswin with its short sword needing a, it's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet casts Cure Light Wounds on Ariana, healing her for 5 hit points. It's Redfern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern leaps forward and engages with Skeleton Archer number 1 in hand to hand. Skeleton Archer number 2 attacks Janet with its short sword needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 18. Zombie number 2 attacks Janet with its long sword needing a 4. It's C. Nyers's turn. What do you want him to do? Sainadius readies his mace and swings at skeleton archer number one, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 3, GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, Eswin readies his shorts, it's Barthal's turn. What do you want him to do? Barthal readies his short sword and swings at zombie number one, needing a 12 to hit. Die roll is a 14 plus two to hit, Barthal hits zombie number one, doing five po Janet readies her mace plus one and swings at skeleton archer number two, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 16, plus three to hit, Janet hits skeleton archer number two, doing Redfern readies his ornate dagger plus one and swings at skeleton archer number one, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll, Sainadius readies his mace and swings at skeleton archer number one, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a one which is an automatic miss, it's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at skeleton number one. It's Eswin's turn. What do you want him to do? Eswin readies his short sword plus one and swings at skeleton number five, needing a 13 to hit. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is roll. Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at skeleton number one, needing a 13 to hit. Sainadius readies his mace and swings at skeleton archer number one, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 7, it's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet readies her mace plus 1 and swings at zombie number 2, needing a 12 to hit. Die roll is a 9, plus, Arthal readies his short sword and swings at skeleton archer number 1, needing a 13 to hit. Zombie number 2 attacks Janet with its lock, it's Redfern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern readies his ornate dagger plus 1 and swings at skeleton archer number 1, needing a 13 to hit. GM note. A new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with high Redfern readies his ornate dagger plus one and swings at skeleton archer number one, Eswin readies his short sword plus one and swings at zombie number two, needing a 12, Sainadius readies his mace and swings at zombie number two, needing a 12 to hit. Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at zombie number two, needing a 12 to hit. Die roll is a 13, plus three to hit, Ariana hits zombie number two, doing four points of damage and defeating it. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 71 experience points. You manage to defeat the closest monsters but there are still dozens more about to take their place. Glancing about, you watch in stunned silence as the undead army slowly shambles toward your party, apparently sealing your doom. Any last words? Redfern asks, all of you now expecting an imminent death. Let's do a party intelligence check to see if anyone can think of a way out of this. Needing a 13 or less from your heroes, a 16 was rolled. Failure, the Angel of Death directs her forces well, Redfern whispers in terror. Looks like our adventure is over. As the undead monsters close in, they are suddenly bathed in holy white light and the weaker undead are turned. Standing about 30 feet away to the south is a female human cleric, her holy symbol still glowing from her successful turning. The cleric has miraculously opened a path through which you can escape, you just need to defeat a few more undead. 
your party is under attack. Menacing your entire party are four skeletons, three zombies, and two skeleton archers. It's Barthal's turn. What do you want him to do? Barthal readies his sling and fires at skeleton number two, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage, Barthal hits skeleton number two, doing two points of damage, skeleton number two, Redfern readies his sling and fires at skeleton archer number one, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a, Sainadius uses turn undead, but wasn't able to turn any of the encountered undead. Skeleton Archer number 1 attacks Oriana with its short bow needing an 18. Skeleton Archer number 2 attacks Eswin with its short bow needing a 16 to hit. D Zombie number 2 closes in on Janet to attack. It's Oriana's turn. What do you want her to do? Oriana readies her short sword plus 1 and swings at Skeleton number 3, needing a 13 to hit. Janet uses turn undead, but wasn't able to turn any of the encountered undead. Skeleton number 4 closes in on Sainadiers to attack. Zombie number 1 closes in on Sainadiers to attack. Zombie number 3 closes in on Barthol to attack. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting. Barthol binds the wounds of Eswin, returning his hit points to zero and stopping his bleeding. Skeleton number 1 attacks Janet with its short sword needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 17, it's Red Fern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern casts Magic Missile on Skeleton Archer number 1, striking it with a Magic Missile for 4 points of damage. Skeleton Archer number 1 has been defeated. Skeleton number 4 attacks Sainadiers with its short sword needing a 17 to hit. Skeleton Archer number 2 attacks Oriana with its short bone, it's Oriana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana uses a potion of light healing on Eswin, healing him for 5 hit points. Zombie number 1 attacks Sainadiers with its long sword needing a 17 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does dub. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet readies her mace plus 1 and swings at skeleton number 1, needing a 13 to hit. Skeleton number 3 attacks Ariana with its short sword needing a 18 to hit. Die roll is zombie number 2 attacks Janet with its long sword needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 15. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, it's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana binds the wounds of Janet, returning her hit points to zero and stopping her bleeding. Skeleton, it's Red Fern's turn. What do you want him to do? Redfern uses a potion of light healing on Janet, healing her for 7 hit points. It's Jan- Janet uses a orb of alchemist fire on roughly half of all encountered combatants, blasting them in chemical fire skeleton number 1 avoids the attack altogether, skeleton number 3 avoids the attack altogether, Skeleton number 4 is burned for 13 points of damage, needing a 15 or greater. Skeleton number 4 rolls a 3 and fails versus Dragon Breath. Skeleton number 4 has been defeated. Skeleton Archer number 2 is burned for 13 points of damage, needing a 15 or greater. Skeleton Archer number 2 rolls a 9 and fails versus Dragon Breath. Skeleton Archer number 2 has been defeated. Z Zombie number 2 attacks Janet with its longsword needing a 14 to hit. Die roll, it's Eswin's turn. What do you want him to do? Eswin readies his short sword plus one and swings at zombie number two, needing a 12 to hit. Die roll is a 10. GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, it's Oriana's turn. What do you want her to do? Oriana binds the wounds of Sainadiers, returning his hit points to zero and stopping his bleeding. It's Eswin's turn. What do you want him to do? 
S. Win readies his short sword plus one and swings at zombie number three, needing a 12 to hit. Zombie number three attacks Ariana with its long sword needing a 18 to hit. Die roll is a two, plus two to hit, zombie number, it's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet readies her mace plus one and swings at skeleton number one. It's Redfern's turn. What do you want him to do? GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first. Janet readies her mace plus one and swings at skeleton number one, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 10, plus three. S. Win readies his short sword plus one and swings at skeleton number three, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 11, Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at skeleton. It's Red Fern's turn. What do you want him to do? GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher value. Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at skeleton number three, needing a 13 to hit. It's S. Win's turn. What do you want him to do? S. Win readies his short sword plus one and swings at skeleton number three, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a seven, plus five to hit, S. Win misses skeleton number three. It's ja Janet readies her mace plus one and swings at skeleton number three, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 16, plus three to hit, Janet hits skeleton number three, doing six points of damage and defeating it. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 62 experience points. Before the whole of the undead army can react, you hack your way toward the human cleric, escaping what should have been a horrible death. Flee to the river raft while you can. A cold wind blows here from the Wilex River just 20 feet to the east. A river raft is anchored along the shoreline south of you, your only hope for salvation. St. Aetius casts Cure Light Wounds on himself, healing him for 8 hit points. GM Alert, disease is no longer affecting Eswin, Janet uses a potion of light healing on herself, healing her for 3 hit points. Travel alert, using the path, you travel south, taking a minute to arrive, dressed in leather armor and wearing an assortment of leaves, berries, flowers, and other natural materials, the cleric here has bravely given your party a chance to flee what should have been a horrible death and you can't help but wonder who she is. And who do we owe our gratitude to for saving us? Eswin asks with surprising politeness, not quite as paranoid as you'd expect. I am Kartha, and I am here to help. You've been ambushed by the remnants of the undead army that attacked Kathleen. Hurry, let's go. The cleric points toward the river 20 feet away, a sturdy raft anchored there ready to take you to the other side and away from the undead ambush. You need to flee or be exterminated. First, however, it appears this new cleric wants to join your party, and, at the moment, you can use all the undead turning ability you can get. Welcome Kartha to your party. Kartha is a level 2 cleric and takes her place at your side. Click her profile to learn about her. While you appear to have gained a new and powerful ally, the whole of the undead army has now recovered from Kartha's turning and they give chase as you turn to flee, the raft just 20 feet away. The small path here leads to the Wilex River to the south. Kartha casts Cure Light Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 4 hit points. Travel Alert, using the path, you travel south, taking a minute to arrive, 
the female cleric Kartha now having joined your adventuring party, you quickly reach the wooden raft intended to take you to the eastern shore of the Wilex River. Your heroes undo the raft moorings keeping it tethered to the shore, but you won't have enough time to depart before the first wave of undead attack. Your party is under attack. Coming at all of you are five skeletons, two skeleton archers and two ghouls. It's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus one and swings at ghoul number one, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 7, plus 3 to hit, Ariana misses ghoul number 1. Kartha uses turn undead, but wasn't able to turn any of the encountered undead. Skeleton Archer number 1 attacks Ariana with it, it's Red Fern's turn. What do you want him to do? Red Fern readies his sling and fires at Skeleton Archer number 2, needing a 13 to hit. Die roll is a 20 which is an automatic hit and does double damage, Red Fern hits Skeleton Archer number 2, doing 2 points of damage, Skeleton Archer number 2 suffers minimal damage versus ammunition and defeating it. Ghoul number 1 attacks Ariana with its claws needing an 18 to hit. Die roll is a 9, plus 2 to hit, Ghoul number 1 misses Ariana. Ghoul number 1 again attacks Ariana with its claws needing an 18 to hit. Die roll is a 2, plus 2 to hit, Ghoul number 1 misses Ariana. Ghoul number 1 again attacks Ariana with its bite needing an 18 to hit. Die roll is a 19, plus 2 to hit, Ghoul number 1 hits Ariana, potentially paralyzing her but having no effect, Ariana is immune to paralysis. Ghoul number 1 further damages Ariana, biting her for 2 points of damage and leaving Ariana with 1 hit point. Ghoul number 2 attacks Eswin with its claws needing a 16 to hit. Die roll is a 16, plus 2 to hit, Ghoul number 2 hits Eswin, nearly paralyzing him but unsuccessful, needing a 11 or greater, Eswin rolls a 16 and saves versus paralysis or petrify. Skeleton number 5 closes in on St. Aviers to attack. It's Janet's turn. What do you want her to do? Janet uses turn undead, but wasn't able to turn any of the encountered undead. It's Bart Hall's turn. What? Barthol uses a potion of light healing on Ariana, healing her for 3 hit points. It's C. Nyers' turn. What do you want him to do? GM note, a new combat round has begun. Initiative is rolled, with higher values acting first, St. Aeus uses turn undead, attempting to turn destroy all encountered undead skeleton number 1 is turned, skeleton number 2 is turned, skeleton number 3 is turned, skeleton number 4 is turned, skeleton number 5 is turned, Skeleton Archer number 1 is turned. It's Ariana's turn. What do you want her to do? Ariana readies her short sword plus 1 and swings at ghoul number 1, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 14, plus 3 to hit, Ariana hits ghoul number 1. Barthol readies his short sword and swings at ghoul number 1, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 9, St. Aeus readies his mace and swings at ghoul number 1, needing a 14 to hit. Die roll is a 13, plus 2 to hit, St. Aeus hits ghoul number 1, doing 7 points of damage and defeating it. Ghoul number 2 fails a morale check, flees the encounter area and is automatically defeated. Well done. All combatants have been defeated, ending the battle. Each hero receives 54 experience points. The monsters are beaten back and you somehow manage to push the raft away from the shoreline, creating just enough space to save yourselves. Congratulations! You've escaped the deadly undead trap. Let's reward them with some bonus experience. Each hero earns 71 experience points. Ariana has gained a new energy level and receives 7 new hit points. The river raft rests just off the western shore of the Wilex River. 
you can pull along the ropes tying the raft to the opposite shorelines of the river to travel either east or west. Travel alert, using the river, you travel southeast, taking a half hour to arrive, your heroes pull along the ropes guiding you to the eastern shoreline of the Wilex River in silence, the undead army to the west unable to pursue you any longer. As your party begins to tend their wounds, all eyes fall upon the female cleric Kartha and why she would risk her life to save all of you. That was a noble thing you did back there, Ariana begins, perhaps the most thankful of the party. Agreed, Eswin adds. You are either very brave or very foolish. Why risk your life to try and save us like that? You must understand, Kartha returns, fully expecting the questions. A few days ago I had a dream, a revelation, that only I could save your party and help you return the life's heart to Kathleen. A revelation? Ariana asks, not sure of Kartha's meaning. Let's do a curiosity check to see if you know anything more about this revelation thing. Needing a 13 or less from Janet, a 8 was rolled. Success, your understanding of the term is that there are a few select events that occur within Sisalus which are so profound that a few can know about them even before they happen. Apparently this Kartha learned of your fated demise at the hands of the undead beyond and was able to circumvent the disaster, luckily for you. You lie. Sainadir suddenly blurts out, condemning Kartha on the spot. Sisla would never allow a heathen like you such wondrous insight as a revelation. You need to be banished immediately. Sainadir stares at Kartha as if she were the devil herself, surprising all of you. Awkward silence fills the air for a few moments, then Kartha looks to you before taking a step towards Sainadir's, not intimidated by his outburst whatsoever. Let's do a tolerance check on your hero to see if you know anything about the apparent feud between the two clerics. Needing a 16 or less from Janet, a 18 was rolled. Failure, Kartha is a mutant, a pagan priestess who has utterly rejected belief in Sisla as a goddess, and you can sort of understand why Sainadir seems extremely distrusting of her, even hateful. After all, how can you trust and respect anyone who has turned her back on the most important person in all of Sisala's history? I don't care what you think about me personally, Kartha begins, quite familiar with being labeled an outcast because of her minority viewpoint. But I knew the right thing to do was find your party and try to help, I arrived at the inn just minutes before you did. You've never encountered someone like Kartha before. How do you respond, choose an option, be curious, be grateful, be suspicious? Janet permanently increases her reason score by one point, showering Kartha in gratitude for saving all of your lives, you ask her if she knows anything more about the undead trap that very nearly destroyed your party. I arrived just as the undead were attacking the patrons within the boathouse, Kartha responds, heartbroken over their deaths. I saw a woman bathed in glowing white light direct the undead and I watched her prepare the monsters to ambush you. So the angel of death is onto us, Eswin recognizes, believing Kartha's story. She knows we're coming for her. Kartha nods affirmatively, sending a chill down your spine. Let's do a party wisdom check to see if you can determine anything more from the conversation. Needing a 14 or less from Janet, a 1 was rolled. Success. GM note, your quest log has been updated. Click the quests button for all the details, well need a new plan once we find this angel of death, Eswin wisely concludes. We're no match for her unless we somehow regain the element of surprise. Let's go. You've reached the eastern shoreline of the Wilex River, the heart of the evil root forest now due south of you less than two days away. Your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended, spells are memorized and your heroes are refreshed and re-energized.
Janet casts Cure Light Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 7 hit points. Kartha casts Cure Light Wounds on Janet, healing her for 5 hit points. Sainadiers cast Cure Light Wounds on Eswin, healing him for 4 hit points. GM Note, it's dark here. Click the Use Item button to select a source of light, your party rests and recovers for 8 hours. Wounds are tended, spelled. Janet uses a glowing skull throughout the entire local area, illuminating everything well.